The Yogyakarta Sultanate or Kasultanan Gyogyakarta Hayden Ingrat with Javanese pronunciation, is a Javanese monarchy in Yogyakarta special region, Indonesia. The current head of the Sultanate is Heyman Kabawano X. Yogyakarta existed as a state since 1755 on the territory of modern Indonesia in the central part of Javo Island. The Sultanate became the main theater of military operations during the Javan War of 1825 to 1830, following which a significant part of its territory was annexed by the Dutch, and the degree of autonomy was significantly curtailed. In 1946 to 1948, during the War of Independence of Indonesia, the capital of the Republic was transferred to the territory of the Sultanate, in the city of Yogyakarta. In 1950, Yogyakarta became part of Indonesia as a special region, on the status equal to a province. At the same time, the hereditary sultan's title and some ceremonial privileges, were legally secured for its rulers. The sultanate is claimed to own almost 10% of Yogyakarta's land. History after Sultan Agung, the Sultanate of Mataram was declining due to power struggle within the Sultanate itself. To make things worse, Kok Dutch East India Company exploited the power struggle to increase its control. At the peak of the conflict, the Mataram Sultanate was split in two based on the Treaty of Jinti of 13 February 1755, Yogyakarta Sultanate and Zurakarta Sunanate. The Jinti Treaty mentioned Panjur and Mangkabumi as Sultan of Yogyakarta with the title of His Highness the Sultan, Commander in the Battlefield, Servant of the Most Gracious, Cleric and Caliph that safeguards the religion. During the era of Dutch occupation there were two principalities, the Yogyakarta Sultanate, Kasultan and Yogyakarta, and the smaller Pakulam and Duchy, Principality, Kadipat and Pakulamun. The Dutch colonial government arranged for the carrying out autonomous self-government, arranged under a political contract. When the Indonesian independence was proclaimed, the rulers, the Sultan of Yogyakarta and Prince of Pakulamun made a declaration they would become part of the Republic of Indonesia. Those two regions were unified to form the Yogyakarta Special Region and the Sultan became the Governor of Yogyakarta and the Prince of Pakulamun as the Vice-Governor, both were responsible to the President of Indonesia. The Special Region of Yogyakarta was created after the Independence War ended and legalized on 3 August 1950. Princes and Princesses of the Yogyakarta Sultanate, 1870 in carrying out the local government administration it considers three principles, decentralization, concentration and assistance. The provincial government carries out the responsibilities and authorities of the central government, while on other hand carrying out its autonomous responsibilities and authorities. The regional government consists of the head of the region and the legislative assembly of the region. Such construction guarantees good cooperation between the head of region and the legislative assembly of region to achieve a sound regional government administration. The head of the special region of Yogyakarta has got responsibility as the head of the territory entitled as a governor. The first governor was the late Heyman Kabu 109, Sultan of Yogyakarta and continued by Pakuala Maith as acting governor until Heyman Kabu 110th ascended in 1998. Unlike the other heads of regions in Indonesia, the governor of the special region of Yogyakarta has the privilege or special status of not being bound to the period of position nor the requirements and way of appointment. However, 
in carrying out their duties, they have the same authority and responsibilities. On the 5th of May 2015, following a royal decree issued by the Sultan, Princess Mangkabumi previously known as Princess Pembeyun received the new name Mangkabumi Heimeyu Heyuning Bawana Langinging Mataram. This denotes her as the heir is presumptive to the Sultanate. The title Mangkabumi was formerly reserved for senior male princes groomed for the throne, including the reigning Sultan. The decree that submits female royals into the line of succession for the first time since the inception of the Sultanate. According to the current Sultan, this was in line with his prerogatives. His action was nonetheless criticized by more conservative male family members, such as his siblings, who were thus displaced in the line of succession. The Sultan of Yogyakarta holds a powerful political and spiritual position on the Indonesian island of Java. He is maneuvering to make his eldest daughter his heir, sparking a bitter feud, as the BBC's Indonesian editor Rebecca Hensch reports. From generation to generation the Sultan who reigns over Yogyakarta seems to adapt himself to the changing of times. He is one of the nearly 1,500 Abdidalam, members of the royal court. A keras, a sacred Javanese dagger, is tucked into his sarong. In the past it was not difficult to choose a prince, because in the past, the Sultan had more than one wife, but you know it's always been women that hold the real power in Javanese households. As is required of anyone entering the palace, I have been traditionally dressed and groomed for over an hour. I am in a tight batik sarong, with a black silk blouse known as a kibaya. My hair has been pulled back and tied into tight bun, a sangul. Everything in this palace, from the placement of trees to the movements made by the royal court, has meaning. In Javanese culture, things are not said directly, but instead conveyed by symbolism. The Sultan, who is 72, recently changed his own title so that it is gender neutral and has given his eldest daughter the new name Gusti Kanjing Ratu Mangkabumi, which means the one who holds the earth. The Javanese royal rule stretches back to the 16th century and while the family is now Muslim like most Indonesians, the rituals they carry out are steeped in mysticism, a product of Hinduism, Buddhism and animism of the past. I am sure the Sultan will make a wise decision for the people of Yogyakarta. Challenging Times the Sultan of Yogyakarta also has to make decisions about more earthly matters as the governor of the city and the surrounding area. When Indonesia gained independence, Jakarta allowed the Yogyakarta royal family to keep its power, out of gratitude for their role in fighting the colonial Dutch rulers. So Yogyakarta is the only place in Indonesia where residents don't get to directly elect their leader. When it was suggested by Jakarta that this should change in 2010 there were angry protests on the streets of Yogyakarta and the central government backed down. The Sultan of Yogyakarta is the last in Indonesia with real political power. But Sultan Heyman Kabawano X has been a controversial modern leader with wide-ranging political and business ambitions. When Mount Merapi started erupting in 2006 he told villagers to listen to scientists rather than palace appointed gatekeeper of the volcano about when to evacuate. And some in Yogyakarta accuse him of turning this cultural, once sleepy, capital into a city of shopping malls, billboards and high-rise buildings. Sultan Heyman Kabawano X is a prominent moderate Islamic leader in Indonesia. This is an Islamic kingdom. It's not about walking around looking like someone from the Middle East and just sounding very religious. Islam is woven into everything we do daily. This is not about religion. It's about protecting our culture and tradition and society understands that. The Sultan is above all religions architecture. 
The palace's chief architect was Sultan Haman Kabawana I, who founded the Yogyakarta Sultanate. His architectural expertise was appreciated by the Dutch scientist Theodore Gorty Thomas Bijard and Lucien Adam, who considered him a worthy successor of second Pakabawano founder of the Zurakarta Sunanate. The palace layout, which followed the basic design of the old city of Yogyakarta, was completed in 1755 to 1756. Another building was added by a later Sultan of Yogyakarta. Javanese architecture uses floral patterns, such as this relief on the palace ceiling. The complex consists of a courtyard covered with sand from the south coast, a main building and a secondary building. The buildings are separated by a wall with recall in Semartine and Du style. The palace door is made of thick teak. Behind or in front of a gate in Javanese architecture is usually an insulating wall Renton or Bacchirono, sometimes with a distinctive, traditional ornament. The wooden buildings of the complex have a traditional Javanese architectural style, decorated with flora, fauna, or nature motifs. Foreign influences Portuguese, Dutch, and Chinese are also seen. The buildings are of joglo construction. The trapezoidal joglo roof is usually covered with red or grey shingles, tiles, or zinc. It is supported by a central pillar Soko Guru and secondary pillars. Pillars are usually dark green or black, with yellow, light green, red or gold highlights. Other wooden building elements match the pillars in color. For the stone pedestal, Ompak, the black color is combined with gold ornamentation. White dominates the walls of the building and the complex. The floor, usually made of white marble or patterned tiles, is higher than the sandy courtyard. Some buildings have a higher main floor. Other buildings have a square stone, Silo Gilang, for the Sultan's throne. Each building is classified by use. The main class building, used by the Sultan, has more ornamentation than the lower class buildings, which have simple ornamentation or none at all. Symbolism White Monument at an Intersection Gilikalong Monument, popularly known as Tugu Yogyakarta. A Kraton is a palace. Keratin is the living quarters of the royal family. Tamarind and Spanish cherry trees line the road from Krapiak Hunting House to the palace, which runs from Tugu Yogyakarta to the palace. Tugu Yogyakarta the Gilikalong Monument, on the north side of the old city, symbolizes unification between the king means Gilong and the people means Gilig in Javanese man on garlic coil Augusti. It also symbolizes the final unity of the creator Mean Karlik and his subjects. The gate to Napraetor a mean gate to the Kedatan quarter represents a good person is someone who is generous and knows how to control his lust, and the two Dwar Apala statues means Balabutu and Sinkara Bala represent good and evil. The palace's artifacts are believed to have the power to repulse evil. The current Sultan of Yogyakarta, Sri Sultan Haman Kubor I of Tenth is the father of five daughters. The Sultanate has customarily been inherited through the male line. Following that tradition, it was widely assumed that at the end of the current Sultan's reign the Sultanate would pass to his half-brother. Since the position of Sultan is automatically granted the office of Governor of Yogyakarta Province, this would also mean the Sultan's half-brother would assume this position. The privilege of government office without elections is unique to Yogyakarta. It is also a relatively new phenomenon. The current Sultan's father, Sri Sultan Haman Kubor 109th, held the position of governor of Yogyakarta from the period of Indonesian independence until the time of his death in 1988. However, he had not been entitled to the position by law. The linking of the Yogyakarta governorship to the position of Sultan as an inherited position became national law in 2012. 
Gender Equality On 30 April 2015, Sultan Heyman Kabor 10X issued a royal proclamation indicating that the position of Sultan could be held by a female. As the only royal house in Indonesia left with political power, the affairs of the Sultanate of Yogyakarta has always caught the interest of many Indonesians, even among those who reside out of Yogyakarta. Deeply rooted in the patriarchal Javanese society, the ruling monarch has never been a female. However, if Sultan Heyman Kabor 1010th, the current Sultan, has his way, which might change in a few years' time. Sultan Heyman Kabor 1010th, who has five daughters but no son, have always been known to initiate reform than before he started his reign. Recently, the Sultan sparked division among the internal royal family through two controversial decisions. On April 30th, he issued a Sabda Raja means King's proclamation which dropped the title Buono from his full royal name and changed his suffix from Buono to Buono. Buono means senior spiritual leader, which in Islam is associated with men. Buono is a Javanese suffix that implies a male while Borwano is a gender-independent term. Later on May 5, he declared a Doryu Raja, King's Command, changing his eldest daughter's name from Gusti Kanjing Ratu Pembeyan to Gusti Kanjing Ratu Mangkabumi, a title traditionally bestowed only to the Crown Prince. Interestingly, Sultan does not portray his decisions as an issue of gender equality. Instead, he claimed that the two decrees, arguably the most profound changes ever in the Sultanate, were made based on a revelation by God delivered through his ancestors, kings of the ancient Mataram kingdom. Although his brothers have repeatedly criticized his move, he has stressed that the decrees were not his own decision, stating I don't mind getting scolded or questioned by my brothers. I will not do anything about it because I would have been afraid of getting scolded by God if the decisions were not made. These two changes were seen as efforts by Heyman Kabor 1010th to set Pembeyan as his heir, which will most certainly be met with resistance from both the royal family and some elements of the Yogyakarta people. Unlike its counterparts in Europe, Yogyakarta monarchy do not, or has not yet, adopted absolute primogeniture, a rule which determines throne succession purely based on order of birth and not on gender. Both the law that give the Yogyakarta its special autonomy and the implied duties of the Sultan assume that he is a male. The last time the Sultanate faced a situation where the current Sultan has no male heir was in the era of HB 5th. At that time, the throne was passed to his younger brother. Legal Hurdle Meanwhile, Indonesia government have stated that the central government will respect the Sultanate's sovereignty and not meddle in its internal affairs. Separately, historians and analysts from Yogyakarta's academia has warned the people not to let this dispute be carried over into a political issue.